guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan, and today I'm going to be redrafting the 2014 NHL Entry Draft. Now, if you didn't see the 2015 redraft, I'll try to explain the rules the best I can. In this redraft series, unlike some of the other redrafts you'll see online, this is based on team need and best player available. I try to go for the top 15 picks and guess where these players would go and what these teams would want going forward. This draft, this redraft, is based on if the draft happened right now and these teams had all of the hindsight. Not if it happened back in 2014, but the redraft happening right now in March 2020. For instance, we have the Carolina Hurricanes who picked 7th overall in 2014. They ended up selecting Hayden Flurry. But if all the players were recycled into the draft and we had a 2014 redraft in the month of March in 2020, the Canes are not selecting Hayden Flurry. But would they go for a forward to boost their forward core or would they go for a goaltender of the future? That's what makes these redrafts so interesting and the top 15 so unpredictable. And also, don't be surprised if team need factors a lot into this top 15 because you have quite a few playoff teams in this list. Winnipeg Jets, Vancouver Canucks, Toronto Maple Leafs. Whether they want to fix a defensive issue heading next season or their forward group, a lot of these teams will be picking based on need if it's a pretty even playing field, which for 2014, that is the case. There's a lot of fantastic players to choose from. But where does each player end up in the top 15? Who goes first overall? And what players will these teams end up selecting? Watch till the end for all my predictions and picks, and of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new. But just like a normal draft, we're going to be starting out with the first overall pick in the 2014 NHL draft, and if redrafted today in 2020, the first overall pick will be the Ford Panthers, and they will select Leon Dreisaitl. Now, to me, this pick is very close between him and David Pasternak, but you could also factor in Aaron Ekblad here because, again, we are going on team need. But if Florida has a second chance, if they somehow did this and got the first overall pick again, I don't think they're passing up on Leon Dreisaitl again, one of the best offensive players in the entire league. Now, that defense would take some big hits, and Aaron Ekblad is a huge part of that Florida defense, but you still have some decent guys like Mackenzie Weger and Keith Yandel, who I think can be decent. That defense is not going to be all too great without Ekblad, but just thinking about that forward group of Alex. Alexander Barkov, Leon Dreisaitl, you have also Jonathan Huberdo, you have Evgeny Dadanov, Mike Hoffman. That power play went from ridiculous to even more ridiculous. Now, coming in at number two of the Buffalo Sabres, and at number two, I think the Sabres do end up selecting David Pasternak. Now, I think for them, it's between Pasta and Braden Point. Those two guys are absolutely prolific, but David Pasternak, I think offensively, is just what Buffalo needs. Now, I was kind of considering putting Braden Point here, but Buffalo does end up losing Sam Reinhart if we do this redraft, so that is a big factor. On the right side, after Sam Reinhart, you have Dominic Cahoon and not much else unless you count Wayne Simmons and Kyle Pozo. They could really use a right winger like David Pasternak and he's a pretty good one by the way. And again I was considering Braden Point as a center and that would be a very lethal two-way center group of Eichel and Braden Point but this is one of the instances just like Leon Dreisaitl where the best player available kind of counteracts the team need here but still for Buffalo without Sam Reinhardt they would need a supreme right winger which is exactly what Pasta is. But now going on to the third overall pick and the Edmonton and Oilers. And in this spot, of course, they selected Leon Dreisaitl. But now without Leon, him going first overall, if the draft was redrafted today in 2020, I think Edmonton will select Brandon Point and would practically run up to the stage to do so. Now, this again all affects on who they lose in this draft, which is Leon Dreisaitl. If they don't have Dreisaitl, they really have nobody as that second line center. They have Riley Sheehan and Yudar Kara. Not much to choose from. But you have Braden Point, who's a nice consolation prize. Yes, it would absolutely suck to lose Leon Dreisaitl, but Connor McDavid and Braden Point as your top two centers is still very good. But now going on to the Calgary Flames with the fourth overall pick, and at this spot, they selected Sam Bennett. 
it did not work out too well. So I think for the Calgary Flames, they will take another big time forward. And at number four, I think they will select David Larkin. Now, to me, it is between Larkin for them and Nikolai Ehlers, even potentially William Nylander. But I think they will go for the center who I think can be a number one center for Calgary. Sean Monaghan has taken a little bit of steps back recently, especially defensively. He is not as good as he used to be. And same thing as Mikel Blackland, who kind of had a rough, inconsistent year. But now going to the fifth overall pick and these guys, New York Islanders. Yes, this is a Ferris jersey. What's it to you? But originally, the Islanders did select Michael Dal Cole. I think they will go for a forward in this spot, though. I was kind of contemplating going for Eric Ekblad because they would lose Devon Taves in this redraft, but I do think they'll go for a left winger specifically, and that will be Nikolai Ehlers. On the right side, I was contemplating if they go for William Nylander, but they already have Jordan Eberle and Josh Bailey. That's pretty solid. But on the left side, you have Andrew Ladd and potentially Anthony Bavillier if he transitions that way full time. To me, that's a team that can really use a bona fide first line winger that can score at that rate alongside Matthew Barzal. And now going on to the sixth overall pick and the Vancouver Canucks and at number six, I think they select finally. Aaron Ekblad. Now, I think for Vancouver, it's between him and William Nylander, and I think it would be very close if this redraft were to happen. But I think on that defense, they're in serious need of a guy who can just completely shut it down, like a guy like Aaron Ekblad can. Now, Aaron Ekblad plays on the right side, Quinn Hughes plays on the left side, and you know what I'm thinking, a potential pairing of Quinn Hughes and Aaron Ekblad. That's almost too good to be true, and for Vancouver, I think would make their defense a whole heck of a lot better. Now, they would lose Thatcher Demko in this redraft, but you still have Jacob Markstrom, but the defense, in my opinion, would be a lot better, and the team overall would be a lot better, too. But coming in at number 7 and the 7th overall pick, the Carolina Hurricanes, who originally selected Hayden Fleury 7th overall, right now in 2020, are pretty much the wild card of this redraft. They could maybe go for William Nylander, some other solid options, but I think they have a chance to really upgrade their goaltending situation, and I think they take that chance. 7th overall, I think they select Igor Shestjorkin. Now, there are some great other options too, but for Carolina, the goaltending is looking kind of bleak. Nadelkovic looks like an NHL goalie potentially at some day, but not right now, and the future is kind of a mystery there. You have Peter Moran, James Reimer, but those guys are more on the aging side, and they could really use a young star goaltender, and Igor Shashurkin is 100% that. But now coming in at number 8, and the Toronto Maple Leafs, and with William Nylander still available, at 8th overall, I think they retake William Nylander with the chance they end up getting. Now, Toronto obviously could use a defenseman, and that's what I thought they would do if they redraft 2015, possibly take Thomas Shabbat 4th overall, but at this spot, there's really not too many defensemen that are in the same area as Aaron Ekblad. Travis Sanheim is maybe the closest one in my opinion, but I don't think Toronto reaches that much for him. I think they still take Willie. But now going on to the ninth overall pick and the Winnipeg Jets. And in this redraft, I think they do lose Nikolai Ehlers, which would be a big blow that left wing side. For instance, without Ehlers, on left wing, you have Kyle Connor, very good, and then Jacob Perot, and then Andrew Kopp. And it's kind of like, what is even happening here? At the ninth overall pick, I do think they select Kevin Fiala. I think if they have the chance to get Kevin Fiala at ninth overall, they totally take it. And again, without Ehlers, Kevin Fiala is the best left winger of the group. And I think he can be an offensive superstar for Winnipeg, just like he was last year for Minnesota. And now moving on to number 10, the last pick of the top 10 picks. Now with the Anaheim Ducks. And this is a team that is really interesting in this redraft because I think Jacob Verani, well, Verani? Verana will be a very interesting ad for them. But at 10th overall, I think they do take Tony D'Angelo. Now, Tony D'Angelo is not going to fix your defensive problems, but offensively, he is very, very good. And for Anaheim, I think they could totally use that. One of the main reasons why I think guys like Josh Manson haven't been up to this great defensive level that they used to be was because they have a lot more offensive responsibility now with guys like Shea Theodore going off the books, going to Vegas just a couple of years ago. But Tony D'Angelo could lift a lot of those offensive woes on the defense away. He could be a guy that scores points in the power play on even strength and can do it all in that area. But now coming in at number 11 and the Nashville Predators. 
letters, and at the 11th overall spot, I think the Preds end up selecting Jacob Verana. Now, this is a pretty good thing for Nashville to have this whole redraft thing, because even though the Gremlin trade is not looking all too great, in this redraft, it would happen in 2020, which would mean that they would still have Gremlin, and they would have a guy like Verana on their books. And just imagining him alongside guys like Matt Duchesne, I think it would be a pretty good fit for Nashville, and I think they would go for a winger. The defense is fine. UC Saros will be a future starter, but that wing is what they really want, and I think Verana can be that guy for them. But now coming in with the 12th overall pick and the Arizona Coyotes, and this is a fascinating one because in this 2012 redraft, if they don't take either one, they would lose both Nick Schmaltz and Christian Dvorak. And their center core after that is not all too great. You have Derek Stepan and Brad Richardson. Yay! And I think in this spot they will take a center 100%, and I think they'll go for the more offensive end, that being Sam Reinhardt. Now I, now I do think I, they still have a pretty good chance of taking Nick Schmaltz, but Sam Reinhardt is a guy that, alongside the right wingers, can be a pretty solid center for Arizona, and he can play some wing if needed, but I think he might be dependent on to be the first line center. Not exactly ideal for Arizona, but it might be their best option, especially if they're looking at pure offense. But now coming to the third overall pick and the Washington Capitals, and in this spot, they would lose Jacob Verona, and that sucks, but I think they will go for a left winger to kind of replace that blow, that being Victor Olofsson. Now, when it comes to pure power play potential, you have Alex Ovechkin and Victor Olofsson on your left side. That is not bad whatsoever, and for Washington, I think they could use some offense, especially when you lose a guy like Jacob Verona, you can definitely use it. Although Olofsson has some work to do, I think even strength on the power play can be a beast for Washington. Washington, and alongside Ovi, Backstrom, and Kuznetsov would be pretty sweet to see. And now going on to my favorite team, the Dallas Stars, and the 14th overall pick. In this spot, they originally got Julius Honka, and they'll try to correct that mistake going for a forward in this spot, and I think they will select Victor Arvidsson. Now, in a redraft like this, I think Dallas would target a right winger. When you look on that right side, there's not too much besides Pavelski. You got Corey, suspension in the Winter Classic Perry. You got Matias Janhark, and you got Blake Como. Not all too great. And Victor Arvidsson is a guy who has a down year, yes, but I think with the right teammates and a guy like Rupe Hines, I think they could do a lot of damage. I think he's set for a rebound year, a solid one, and on a Dallas offense that is in need of all the offense they can get, Victor Arvidsson, I think will be a pretty nice ad for them. Now going to the last pick here today at 15th overall with the Detroit Red Wings, and I think they end up selecting Nick Schmaltz. Now I think they go for a center, and that is just because they're losing Dylan Larkin. That is an absolutely huge blow to an already pretty bad Detroit team, but I think they do take Nick Schmaltz because I think he can be a decent first line center at his prime. But losing Dylan Larkin stings either way you cut it. I think they might take a look at guys like Kasperi Kapanen, maybe even Ilya Sorokin, but I think they will go for Nick Schmaltz. And by the way, I did not include Ilya Sorokin here because I think the doubt of him actually coming to North America is pretty big right now. And for teams like Detroit who can use all they can get, I'm not sure if they take a risk as big as that. But that'll be it for today's 2014 NHL Redraft. Thanks so much for watching all y'all. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video or just stopping by, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below all your thoughts on this today's video, what you guys think of my picks, what you agree and disagree with, and also let me know where you think the top players would go in 2014 if the redraft happened today in 2014. 20. Share this video with your friends, get the redraft out there, and click on this card for all my hockey process goodness right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you guys next video or stream. Goodbye.